Hello. I'm doing my first pen review on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. My name is Dennis and I'm a new collector of pens, or I have been for about six months. And it's my goal to review every single one of the pens that I have. Today's review will focus on this one pen I have in my hand, which is called the Waterman Charleston. The story behind this pen is that I'm living in Paris, an American in Paris, and I looked at an ad in what is the equivalent of uh, Craigslist here in Paris, and um, wanted what was called a Waterman Expert. I had seen one in a store, and that's what I thought I was buying. So I showed up at this place and I met this woman in a train station. Her name was Santi. And Santi gave me what she told me was a Waterman Expert. And when I looked at it in the train station, it looked a little different. But I knew that the Expert had come out in three different uh, versions. So I'm thinking maybe this was an early version. It's an Expert. She says it's an Expert. So when I took it, took it home, I started to have more and more doubts about the pen because it looked different than the pictures. So I did a little bit of research and I discovered that it is indeed not an expert, but um, a Waterman Charleston. So one of the interesting discoveries I made about it is that unlike the, uh, the Waterman Expert, this one actually has a gold nib. And so I was quite surprised at that. It's a, it's a 14 karat gold nib. But if I compare this pen to some of the others that I've had, I mean, this one, it, it, it has a nice shine to it, very nice shiny. It's got the classic black and gold uh, accoutrements. It has uh, uh, a, a cap on it that is unscrews. Then uh, if you want to be able to take the pen itself and uh, access the converter, it also unscrews very easily. It has a metal uh, uh, fastening so that it, you know that it's a decent quality. I think a pen like this runs about $180. I ended up buying it for 40 euros and it hadn't been inked, according to what Santi told me. And um, I like the pen, but I do notice a couple of things about it that people who are really anal about their pens may not like. One is, if you run your fingers over the surface of the pen, uh, you'll notice that there is a slight seam. So you'd think that a pen of this quality wouldn't have that kind of a, of a situation, but you can't really see it. You can, you can feel it though, you can feel a line coming down the pen. And at the very, very top is a little dot, like it's been put into some sort of a mold, and it didn't quite cut it exactly right. So there's a teeny little bit of a rough, stop, rough spot up there. Other than that, um, this pen is tiny. It's the smallest pen that I have in my collection. I don't have any trouble writing with it. Um, and it, it's, it's a decent performer. It's based on a 1930s style of a Waterman pen, from what I understand. Would I recommend it? Uh, I don't think I'd pay $180 for it, or 180 euros, or whatever that price is. 40 euros, I think, is a, is a good deal. And it's, it's good for you to experiment, if you're a new guy like me, with what a smaller pen feels like in your hand and how it writes. Again, it's got a good sturdy feel to it. Color and fittings are nice, the, uh, the pen is, is not defective in any way, it's got the Waterman label at the, at the top, so you know it's from a respectable company. And that's basically it. So, um, you know, if you like this review or didn't like this review or want to add some, some tips, please do so in the comments, and um, if you've got a nice pen that you'd like to trade for this at some point, let me know. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you.